वेलकम एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डी एस मुंडे वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग एंड फूड इंजीनियरिंग के के वाघ कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी नासिक सो सो फार इन प्रीवियस टू वीडियो लेक्चर्स वी कवर अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द थर्मल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोड्यूस एंड various thermal properties like specific heat and its methods of measurement and uh, important thermal properties like coefficient of thermal expansion and latent heat so in this particular video lecture we will study about the thermal properties like thermal conductivity so thermal conductivity is denoted by small k so the knowledge of thermal conductivity for biological material is essential for heat analyzing during heat and mass transfer problems so the quantity of heat that flows through the grain is totally depend upon the thermal conductivity of the grain it means thermal conductivity is nothing but the ability of a material or a substance to conduct heat so the definition of thermal conductivity is it may be defined as the quantity of heat flow in a unit time through unit area of the cross section of element of the material of unit thickness when the difference of temperature between its faces is unity so this is more specifically is shown in this particular diagram here a material is shown having thickness delta x then temperature of one of its face is t1 and temperature of other face is t2 where q is the quantity of heat flow through the area this quantity of or direction of heat flow is perpendicular to the cross section of the material so in this way according to the fourier's law of heat conduction the rate of heat flow through the material q material is expressed as q is equal to minus k into a into delta t by x where k is nothing but the thermal conductivity having in it kilo calorie meter per meter square or degree kelvin it is also has in it watt per meter kelvin a is the area normal to the heat flow having in it meter square and delta t by x is the temperature difference per unit thickness having unit degree kelvin per meter so from this equation of fourier equation k that is thermal conductivity is calculated by q into x capital k is equal to q into x by a into delta t okay so this thermal conductivity has some special properties or features that is it increases with the increase in grain moisture content it also increases with increase in density of the material and it slightly increases with increase in temperature and pressure so measurement of thermal conductivity measurement of thermal conductivity is done by two methods that is steady state method and unsteady state method so this steady state method methods of measurement of thermal conductivity again is classified into three categories that is parallel plate method concentric cylinder method and concentric 
spare method we will study these methods one by one so first steady state method what is still before going to study the methods of measurement of thermal conductivity under steady state first we will understand the concept of concept of steady state so in this method that is in steady state method the temperature at any given point along the direction of flow is kept constant with time there is no change in the temperature so this method has certain drawbacks while using the first drawback is it takes long time usually from 10 to 12 hours to attain the steady state conditions for agricultural materials like grains since the temperature difference is maintained for a long time the moisture available in the grain migrates from the heat source towards outside therefore the homogeneity of the produce changes with time resulting in accuracy in measurement so because of long time of achieving steady state these are certain drawbacks or takes place in this particular method so these three methods are followed to determine k under steady state condition that is first one is the parallel plate method in this parallel plate method or using this parallel plate method we follow some procedure to determine the thermal conductivity of agricultural produce so in this method the specimen of which thermal conductivity is to be determined is placed between two plates out of these two plate one of the plates is heated and the other plate is cooled with flowing cold water so basically there is a one simple common thing in three methods of thermal conductivity determination of agricultural produce in these three methods that is in parallel plate method in concentric cylinder method and in concentric sphere method so one of the part of the instrument is heated and other part is cooled so likewise in this parallel plate method there are two plates in these two plates the sample of his specific thermal conductivity is determined is sandwiched and out of these two plates one of the plate is heated and the other is cooled with flowing cold water the temperatures at different points are measured using thermocouples the thermal conductivity of a given material is calculated by the equation that is calculated by using fourier's equation q is equal to minus ka delta t by x so where q is equal to rate of heat flow through the material kilo calorie per hour a is equal to cross sectional area of the sandwich material meter square delta t temperature difference under steady state condition across the thickness of material having a degree kelvin and x thickness of the material in meter so this particular slide shows the diagram of parallel plate method in which there are two plate one plate is heated and another plate is cooled by using flowing cold water in between these two plates the material of which thermal conductivity is to be determined is sandwiched so this is more clearly shown so this is more clearly shown in the image shown at the right hand side of the slide in which two plates are shown and in these two plates specimen sample is sandwiched so 
द रेट ऑफ हीट फ्लो इज कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द इनपुट हीट टू द हीटिंग सोर्स द मेथड इज वेरी सिंपल इट इज मोस्ट सुटेबल फॉर एग्रीकल्चरल मटेरियल्स विच आर प्रेफरेबली इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्लैब्स लाइक स्ट्रॉ बोर्ड्स ब्रेड स्लाइस मीट स्लाइस इटी which can the mat that is the materials which can easily be sandwiched into the two plates so the next method of thermal conductivity determination is concentric cylinder method the apparatus consists of two cylinders assembled coaxially the sample of his thermal conductivity is to be determined is placed between the annular space between the cylinders when we mount these two cylinders coaxially there is a annular space available between the two cylinders and in this annular space we have to fill the sample of which thermal conductivity is to be determined the inner cylinder is heated by means of electrical network and outer cylinder is cooled by flowing water as previously i told you that in three, in all these three methods of thermal conductivity measurement there is one common principle or common point that is out of the two parts of the equipment we have to heat one part and the other part is cooled by using or by flowing cold water so the thermal conductivity k is calculated by the equation q is equal to in bracket 2 pi kl delta t bracket complete divided by natural log of r 0 divided by r i bracket complete where q is equal to rate of heat flow having unit kilo calorie per hour k is thermal conductivity of the material having unit kilo calorie per meter hour degree kelvin l is the thickness of the material placed between annular space of cylinder having in it meter delta t is the temperature difference across the material having in it degree kelvin r o or r zero is the radius of outer cylinder in meter r i is the radius of inner cylinder having in it meter so, so before going to discuss these points we will back to the previous slide that slide shows the diagram of the concentric cylinder method for determination of thermal conductivity of dry powder it means this method is particularly used for measurement of thermal conductivity of materials which are in a powder form so in which two coaxially cylinders are shown due to such arrangement there remains or exist a annular space and in the annular space we have to fill the required we have to fill the sample of which thermal conductivity is to be determined then the inner cylinder is heated by electrical network and the outer Uh, cylinder is cooled by means of flowing cold water and in this way we have to measure the temperature of inner cylinder and outer cylinder so the temperature along the height of the specimen is assumed uniform and the little difference is neglected the method is simple and economical it can be used for variety of grains and food materials in the powder form the sample material should be packed properly to avoid any convection currents in between them this is the precautions needs to be taken while measuring the thermal conductivity using this method 
that is sample material should be packed properly to avoid any convection currents in between them so thank you so in this way in this particular video lecture we cover thermal properties like thermal conductivity there are and its methods of measurement this thermal conductivity is basically measured by two methods that is steady state method and unsteady state method steady state method has certain drawbacks and this method has four uh, methods by which we can measure the thermal conductivity of biological material so, thank you